Okay, in this video today I'm going to show you how to use the presence absence widget in Clarity. And with presence absence you can detect if something's there or detect if it's not there, depending on what you want to do. In this case I'm using pre-canned images that are on my desktop, which is normally how you would develop a machine vision application. You would capture the images, you would store them on your uh, on your laptop, and then you would later on you would test in the, in the live camera, which I'll, I'll show you how to do that at the end. So let's get started. Um, what I'm going to do today is show you several of the different presence absence functions. I'm going to show you how to detect if that test tube is present. I'm going to show you how to detect if the cap is present. And I'm going to show you how to detect if that barcode is present. So let's start out with the test tube body. So I'm going to add a presence absence widget. You can see how it shows up over here in our step list. Then I have this region of interest. So I'm going to place that region's region of interest right over the test tube itself. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select the threshold met method of presence absence. There's several different methods you can choose, which I'll be exploring several of those today. The next thing I, I'm going to do is I'm going to set the pixel area, the pixel values that I want to look at here. So you can see how Clarity presents a histogram of the image that, that's up here. It's actually of the region of interest in this point. You can see how that histogram will change as I move the region of interest around. So I want to, I'm interested in this histogram here. And then what I'm going to do is I, I'm really, how I'm going to set this up is I'm going to look for bright pixels. Because if that test tube isn't there, I'm going to see this bright background. So I'm going to exclude below 200. So I only want to be counting the bright pixels. And I've, I can set my threshold automatically, or I can, uh, I can set it manually. In this case, I'm going to set it manually, and let's set it up to 225. Okay, so that's saying I'm going to only, I'm not, I'm only going to look at pixels between 200 to 225, and I'm going to have a further threshold of above 225, where I'm going to consider them. 224. I have a little hard time setting it to 225. Um, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to look at my passing range, and I'm going to set from 0 to 200 pixels. So what this is saying is, if I have anywhere between 0 and 200 pixels that are above 224 counts, then my test tube is there. An alternate way to say it is, Here's where case where my test tube is not there. You can see I have over 7,000 of those bright pixels available, and so the step fails. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a present step to check for that cap. So let's add another. Oh, another thing I forgot to do. I can set this, the name of that step to be test tube present just to make it more obvious what the step is actually doing. Then I'm going to add another present step. Let's uh, change this to be cap present. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select a different method to show you how that works. I'm going to select the brightness method. Again I have a region of interest so I'm going to set that over this cap. And you can see my average value of brightness, the average pixel value in that region is 67. So, and then I'm going to, I'm going to leave this alone this time, but I'm saying, okay, I only want to say the cap's there if this value is low, if that brightness value is low. So I'm going to say, okay, anywhere between about 0 to let's say about 150, 151, I'm going to say if my average brightness value is between 0 and 151, then that cap is there. So let's test that out. Okay, so you can see my average value went to 255 because of this bright background I have, and so it fails, the cap is not there. Now I'm going to go back again to my first image. And I'm going to do one more thing, is I'm going to look for that barcode. So let's add another presence absence step. And this time, I'm going to choose the edge pixels method on this 
barcode, I have a lot of nice edges, which are the transitions between blacks and whites in the image. And so I'm going to set up an area to look for those. Again, let's change the name of our step to barcode present. Um, now I'm going to set my edge magnitude pretty high. I have really nice black-white edges here, so I'm, I'm not going to accept a magnitude, a, a transition between a black and a white that's any less than 50 counts. Potentially I could make that higher, but I think that's probably a pretty good value to start. The other thing I have to do is set the direction of the edges, and that that's, gets a little bit more complicated. So you can imagine on this dial that the center white circle is a pixel in the image. So you take any pixel of that image and it's going to search in this horizontal direction looking for edges. So we're not interested in edges that are in this direction. We're only interested in the, those barcode edges which are vertical in the image or orthogonal to this pixel. The other thing you should know is that Clarity sets up it's automatically looking for edges that go black to white. We're also going to say I want to look for white to black edges. So this this uh, direction on the dial indicates black to white edges. Now you can see with this barcode I have 729 edge pixels. Um, so what I'm going to do is change my pass criteria. I'm going to say if I have anywhere between 100 and let's say 2000 edge pixels then that barcode is present. Now let's test it out. Okay, well that's good. It failed when there's no tube present. I also have another image. Okay, we have another image of the barcode present, but the cap is not. And then I have another image where the tube is present, cap is present, but the barcode is turned around. You can see how that also fails. The last thing I'm going to do is add an output step. Now that we've had this clarity running and working, we have to have some way of communicating the results to our host. So I'm going to take the output, and the first thing I'm going to do is for each of these steps, I'm going to add some kind of text string and the result. So let's start out, I'm going to add text. So I select add text and I add output, and I'm going to change this to tube present. Then I'm going to take the test tube present result. I can drop down to see all these different parameters that I can output. I can output the result itself, which is what I'm interested in here. But I could also output the time, the, the number of pixels, the pixel count for that particular region of interest, the actual threshold used, and so on. I'm going to add another text string. And I'm going to say cat present. And then let's add our cat present result. And then I'm going to add one more text string. I'm going to say barcode present. And then let's add our barcode present result. And now I can go and see what the output looks like. So you can see in this particular case, tube present is true, cat present is true, barcode present is false. I can run on this one where they should all be true, true, true. I probably would want to add a little delimiter in here between these steps to make it a little more clear. Next one, okay, I get there's no tube, there's no cap, there's no barcode. And then the last image, the tube is there, the cap is not there, but the barcode is there. So this is a quick way that you can take a look at using presence absence to detect something in the image.